you don't always need a full-blown microprocessor to build something advanced because some of today's microcontrollers are insanely powerful. They're fast enough to handle AI, high-end graphics, streaming audio, but still simple enough that they don't need a full-blown operating system. And when I say powerful, I don't just mean clock speed. We're going to look at four things, raw performance, the peripherals and features it supports, how much memory it's got, and how efficiently it uses power. Hi, I'm John Teal. I'm a former microchip design engineer for TI who developed and launched my own product, and for the past 10 years, I've been helping others do the same. All right, let's count down the five most powerful microcontrollers available. At number five, we've got the Nordic NRF54. It's a high-end dual-core microcontroller built around ARM Cortex M33 cores running at up to 320 megahertz. It's got up to one megabyte of RAM and two megabytes of flash. But what really separates the NRF54 is streaming audio over Bluetooth low energy. It also supports Matter for smart home devices, but BLE audio is where it really shines. It can handle wireless audio, real-time DSP, and your application logic all on the same chip, and it's incredibly efficient. Nordic designed it for battery-powered products like earbuds, wearables, or smart home devices that need to run for months on a battery. So if you're building a product that needs top-tier Bluetooth audio and long battery life, then the Nordic NRF54 is really hard to beat. If you're not sure which microcontroller makes the most sense for your product, well, I built a free microcontroller selector tool that helps you figure that out. You just answer a few quick questions about your product and it shows you which chip fits best for you. And I've just expanded it to include all of these high performance microcontrollers that I'm talking about in this video. So you can access it for free using the link in the description below or by scanning this QR code. All right, number four is the Renaissance R8M85. And this chip is all about core efficiency. It uses ARM's newest Cortex M85 core running at 480 megahertz, and it supports ARM's Helium DSP extensions, which basically means it can handle math-heavy code like audio processing or machine learning far more efficiently than other microcontrollers. It's got up to 2 megabytes of flash and a megabyte of SRAM, plus security features like Trust Zone and hardware crypto accelerators. You also get plenty of high-speed peripherals like Ethernet, CAN FD, USB High Speed, and Octo SPI. But what really makes this chip stand out is how much performance it gets per milliamp. So the M85 gives you serious compute power without burning through your battery, something you can't say about most high-end microcontrollers. So if you're building something that needs strong performance but still has to run efficiently from a battery, then this chip is a great middle ground. It's not the fastest microcontroller out there, but it's one of the most balanced and efficient ones you can buy right now. Okay, at number three, we've got the NXP IMX RT1180. This is one of the fastest microcontrollers on the market right now. It's got two cores, a Cortex M7 running at up to 800 megahertz and a Cortex M33 running at only 300 megahertz. And, and it's not just fast, it's also loaded with lots of high-end peripherals and features. This chip really blurs the line between a microcontroller and a microprocessor, but it still runs bare metal or a real-time operating system. This is also one of the least power-efficient chips. You're not going to be putting this in a wearable or a coin cell sensor, that's for sure. But if you've got a big battery or it's a plug-in product, then this chip can handle almost anything that you throw at it. So yeah, if you need serious processing power, the NXP IMX RT1180 is really an incredible option. But I will say they could come up with a slightly catchier name. Coming in at number two is the Espressive ESP32P4. Now there has been a ton of anticipation around this chip, and it's finally, finally here. And it definitely delivers. You get dual cores running at 400 megahertz. It also supports both MIPI DSi for displays 
and MIPI CSI for cameras. And no other microcontroller on the market offers both MIPI DSI and CSI, at least not to my knowledge. So that means you can connect both high resolution displays and cameras directly without extra interface chips. It also has dedicated hardware blocks for video and image processing, including an H.264 encoder, a JPEG codec, and a pixel processing accelerator for GUIs. So this isn't just about raw clock speed. This chip throws in a lot of extra flexibility and features. But in terms of power efficiency, it's definitely not the best. Dual cores draw more current under load, so you're not running this one from a coin cell battery. Sorry. But for what you get, it's incredibly impressive. It's powerful, flexible, and easy to develop with, and Espressive's ecosystem keeps getting better. Okay, before we move on to number one, if you're overwhelmed by all these microcontroller options, that's exactly why I built the free microcontroller selector tool. You just answer a few questions about your product, you know, things like performance, requirements, wireless needs, or target cost, and it recommends which microcontrollers make the most sense for your project. So if you're working on a serious product, definitely check it out. The link's in the description below or scan this QR code. All right, number one, the most powerful microcontroller that you can buy in 2025 is the STM32N6. This thing takes everything to a totally new level. It's built around an ARM Cortex M55 core running at up to 800 megahertz. Plus, it's got a dedicated neural art accelerator running at up to 1 gigahertz for AI and machine learning. It's got an insane 4.2 megabytes of on-chip SRAM, and it supports external memory. It also includes a built-in image signal processor, MIPI CSI2 camera interface, and hardware support for JPEG and H.264 video. So yeah, this thing's got just about everything. Raw speed, it's built for AI, it's got vision and advanced graphics capabilities. It's powerful enough for complex GUIs, real-time image recognition, and local AI, all without needing a separate processor. It really, really blurs the line between microcontrollers and microprocessors. But once again, it still runs bare metal or just with a lightweight real-time operating system. So you get huge performance and flexibility without dealing with the overhead of a full operating system. Now, this isn't the right choice for every product by any means. If you don't need something this advanced, the older STM32H7 is still a great option, but for high-end embedded products, the STM32N6 is in a class of its own. Hey, if you'd like my personal help choosing the right microcontroller for your product, we can help you inside the Hardware Academy. And if you found this video helpful, then here's another one that I recommend that you watch next.